In this video, let's investigate how the warm front is so efficient at producing bands of freezing rain. On the left hand side of the image here, we're going to look at a cross sectional view of a warm front, and on the right hand side, we're going to look at a top down view of a warm front as it's associated with the extratropical cyclone. So, on the left hand side, let's start off with what we're picturing here first. You're looking at a cross section where there's warm, moist air that's being pushed out of the south, and it is overrunning a wedge of cooler air that's retreating to the north. This effectively gives you kind of a sandwiched layer of warm air between two pockets of colder air. So as that warm air slides over the top or overruns that retreating wedge of cool air, you get this little band of above freezing air that could potentially melt any snow that falls there. Now we know that whenever we lift warm moist air, it's going to be very, very efficient at producing clouds of precipitation. And to the east of the low pressure system where the warmer is advecting or being pushed over this retreating cool wedge of air, it's going to be very, very good at making precipitation. So let's see what happens. Let's see the transition in that precipitation to the north of the warm front. First, if you go way far to the north, which is this side of the cross section over here, snow will fall. And because it never once enters that warm air that's being pushed over the top of the warm front, it's going to hit the ground as snow. But as we move further and further to the south, a snowflake that falls here may enter that warm pocket of air. And if it enters that warm pocket of air, it'll, it'll promote melting. Now notice what happens here. Because the depth of this pocket of air is so shallow right in through here, that snowflake doesn't completely melt. You get partial melting. You get this one little piece of ice that's stuck on the inside there. That little piece of ice will serve as the nucleation spot, or the ice nuclei, for that partially melted snowflake to refreeze back into an ice pellet once it falls into this much, much deeper uh, surface sub-freezing layer, which is below the warm layer. So because of the partial melting that you get, instead of refreezing back into a snowflake, your, your partially melted snowflake will refreeze back into a ball of ice. Now, if we move just a little bit further to the south, the depth of that warm layer increases in size. Instead of having partial melting, your snowflake now, as it falls into the warm layer, completely melts. And if it completely melts, it turns into liquid. Now, as that liquid drop falls back into the surface subfreezing layer, the temperatures in the surface subfreezing layer are not cold enough for the nuclei that's still sitting on the inside of that liquid water droplet to turn it back into an ice crystal or back into a pellet. And as a result, you get super cooled water, which when it hits the ground and freezes on contact, we call that freezing rain. So if you get complete melting and your, and your droplet falls back into sub-freezing air, it will tend to super cool rather than turn back into ice. Finally, if you have a snowflake that falls on this side, and it never once comes back out of that warm air, you're going to complete melting that just turns the thing into rain. Now, do you notice as we looked at this cross section, if you go from the south to the north, you start off with rain, you go to freezing rain, then sleet, which is also called ice pelts, and snow. Watch the same thing happen on the top down view of the warm front on this side. First, our warm air is being pushed up out of the south. You notice that as this warm air is lifted over the warm front, you get this big pocket of rain. But that rain, as it transitions to the north, turns into freezing rain, into sleet, and these two bands typically occupy about 100 miles wide, and eventually turns all into snow. So as we were learning about in this lesson, we looked at the, the transition from rain to freezing rain, sleet, and snow, we can simply see that it is a product of how this warm wedge of air is stuffed in the middle of two colder pockets of air. And it's the depth of that warm layer that determines the precipitation type at the surface. Again, the transition goes from rain to the south to freezing rain, sleet, and snow as you work your way to the north and then mature extratropical cyclone in wintertime in the mid-latitudes.